My name is Gabriel Fries. I'm an assistant professor in the Phelis Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at McGovern Medical School uh, at UT Health. Um, and here I work as a translational um, researcher working with the biological basis of psychiatric disorders and more specifically bipolar disorder and suicide. So we have been focused on mechanisms that regulate uh, epigenetics or gene expression based on epigenetic mechanisms in the context of psychiatric disorders. Um, we have found, for example, uh, many differences in the levels of DNA methylation, which is one type of epigenetic mechanism between individuals, for example, with a diagnosis of bipolar disorder compared to other people that do not have the disorder, or between people that have attempted suicide in the past versus those that are considered non-attempters, all with the goal of trying to find um, number one biomarkers, so uh, potential lab measures that we can later translate into the clinics to help these uh, individuals or simply to understand better the biology behind these conditions. So the biology behind bipolar disorder and the biology underlying suicide attempt and suicide behavior in general. For example, among uh, many of the findings in my lab, we have found that some of these so-called epigenetic mechanisms can regulate the process of aging, so much so that some individuals with bipolar disorder can have an accelerated, accelerated aging process that's mediated by these uh, mechanisms. And so part of, of our studies uh, here in the department um, focus on ways to prevent that accelerated aging process and so ultimately reduce comorbidity, uh, reduce the premature mortality that uh, many individuals uh, with the diagnosis present. We work with postmortem brains, um, so, so brain tissues from people that had the, the disorder and, and, and died and then by contacting their next of kin, their family members, we get these very generous uh, donations from, from these families so we can really understand what's going on in their brains of their loved ones. Um, I've been working particularly with an area of the brain called prefrontal cortex, which is the, the frontal part of our, of our cortical uh, uh, tissue, uh, which is a, a, an area of the brain that's um, associated with executive functioning and cognitive function in general. And we've known for many years that that area is important in the context of bipolar disorder. And we found some really interesting DNA methylation changes and gene expression changes in, in the brains of people that had bipolar disorder and died of suicide compared to the brains of people that had bipolar disorder but died of other causes. So there may be some uh, mechanisms and some biology that's linked to the suicide death that you only see in the brains of people that died by suicide. And, and by doing this type of study, we hope to again, not only understand better what's going on with the, with the suicide death per se, but use that information to develop tools to prevent that um, fatal outcome, right? So potentially if we could identify individuals that are at a higher risk for uh, either attempting or um, some dying of suicide, that would be obviously very useful and, and particularly impactful. So doing this type of work is really exciting. Uh, we get to work with people with the diagnosis, their families, but also with the molecular aspect of these diseases, which is part of why I am so invested in, and passionate about doing this type of translational work. Um, in our lab, we do, like I said, postmortem brain studies, we do uh, cell culture studies to really get into the, the mechanisms behind the, the, the markers that we're studying in the tissue. We work with blood samples, with, with um, clinical data sets. Um, and it's a very exciting type of work because it allows us to collaborate with people within the department, within UT Health, but also with other institutions in the country and, and around the world. I mean, there, there's a lot of groups trying to tackle the questions that we are exploring. And I think that the consensus is that everyone is really invested in benefiting individuals with, that live with this um, diagnosis and, and their families. That's the ultimate goal of our research is to 
is to help people, right? And to uh, improve the way by which we can treat and, and offer a, a better quality of life for people that are affected by these disorders.